Down the left-hand side of your screen, you will see a number of icons that can be used to create and manipulate designs in the design area. We will start by selecting the Basic Objects icon and click on the square. With your cursor in the design area, click on your left mouse button where you want the first corner of the rectangle to be located. Here we can see that the rectangle is free form depending on where the mouse is positioned. If you want the rectangle to be exactly square, press the Shift key while you move the mouse and the sides will be locked to be exactly the same size, creating a perfect square. To give this square a specific color, we can click on one of the colors in the pick list on the right hand side. The black arrow icon on the left side near the top denotes object mode. When this icon is highlighted, you can click on an object to select it. Selected objects will show a series of small black squares and arrows around the outside showing you that you can now manipulate the selected object. If you position your mouse near the lower right small square, you will be able to click your left mouse key and drag the size of the object to be bigger or smaller. The arc icon in the upper right corner allows you to rotate the selected object, and the squares in the middle of the object allow you to stretch it in any direction you choose. Next, we will add a circle object and set its color to blue. Clicking on the black arrow object mode icon allows us to highlight the circle so that only the circle and not the square is selected. On the top bar we find the Arrange menu and scroll down to the Order option. Moving to the small arrows on the right hand side of the Order option, we see Select Send to Back from the menu. This will send the blue circle to appear behind the red rectangle but we can see that the blue circle is still the selected object. Selecting the red rectangle shows us that these two objects can be moved individually. By holding down the left mouse button well outside the objects, we can create a large square around both objects that now selects both objects at the same time. If we go back to the Arrange menu, we find an option to group the selected objects so that they will now move in unison while they are grouped together. On the left side, under the Black Arrow Object Mode icon, we see a black arrowhead with a dot and a wavy line which enables Node Edit Mode. All vector designs are made of nodes and paths, so Node Edit Mode will allow us to manipulate individual nodes with a greater level of detail than Object Mode. To zoom in on an object, hold down the Alt key while scrolling forward with the wheel of your mouse. To zoom out, hold the Alt key and scroll backwards with your mouse wheel. While in Node Edit mode, we can adjust the corner node of our rectangle to be rounded instead of square. Pulling down the middle node of the rectangle allows us to create a hole in the center. Here you can see that we change back from Node Edit mode into Object mode which reveals the small black square and manipulation handles that allow us to resize, or in this case, rotate the entire object. Enabling the Power Shapes icon, we can add an arrow to our design and click on the Color Pick list on the right-hand side to make it purple.
Returning to the node edit icon and zooming in on our design by pressing Alt while scrolling our mouse wheel, we can see an individual node at the bottom tip of the arrowhead. We can adjust any individual node to create the exact shape we desire. To get a better overall view of our design, we can hold the Alt key while scrolling backwards with our mouse wheel. Recall that we had earlier grouped the red rectangle and the blue circle, so those objects still move in unison, while the purple arrow moves separately. We could of course add the purple arrow to the group by selecting it and choosing Group Objects from the Arrange menu bar as we did earlier. Clicking on the large A allows us to enter the word Hello at the top of the screen. Holding down the left mouse button while moving across the text allows us to highlight any characters we wish to modify. Here we will highlight all the characters, but you can highlight only a few if you want to create a special effect with different fonts. In the upper left corner we see a pull-down menu option that allows us to change the font. We will choose a font that resembles handwriting where the characters overlap each other. In this example, we choose Sego script so that the letters will overlap each other. It is very small, but a very handy display option is found in the lower right hand side of the screen, which allows us to see a color wireframe display of exactly where the cut lines are. This is exactly what the cutter will cut. When we click on the wireframe display, we can see that the E in Hello will cut into the letter L, which follows it. This is a problem, and we need to fix it. Looking at the icons on the left-hand side, we find the Welding tool, which will allow us to weld the two individual objects into one. Once welded, the letter E no longer cuts into the letter L and the word hello has changed from a text object to a single object with a series of nodes just like the other objects. When we welded the word hello, the red rectangle and blue circle did not weld together. This is because only the word hello was selected during the weld operation. If we want, we can select the red rectangle and blue circle and perform a weld operation to make them into a single object. Clicking on the Solid View icon in the lower right shows us that the red rectangle and blue circle are now one object, which means that they both adopt the same color for cutting purposes. Any operation that has been performed can be undone or redone by going to the menu bar and selecting Edit and then Undo or Redo as desired. To save time, you can also press Ctrl-Z to undo or Ctrl-Y to redo any operation. The keyboard shortcut method is much faster. We are only using the slower menu method to demonstrate the process.